first time playing this game. Um, it's a trial, so I only have 10 hours to play this. Um, Welcome I, back to Madden NFL 20. I we selected your games. previous game options. You can change these options and accessibility settings here or at any time later from the game settings. Accessibility settings. Accessibility settings. Entering settings screen, you have 19 options. Oh, Menu narration cool. option is set to office selected. I want this on. In our shield graphics, I don't really need that. turn the crowd down a little bit in 2k the crowd kind of annoys me so yeah I I used to buy Madden like every year and play like one game not even wasted 60 bucks every year I stopped like four three four years ago Accessibility settings. Yeah, I don't know anything about football. I don't know plays, whatever. I only see. I only watch certain games. Um, obviously, I know the basics: touchdown, field goals, first downs. Accessibility settings. I don't know anything about any plays or anything all right let's go It's the coach. Welcome to EA Sports coverage of the 2019 NFL Pro Bowl from right here in Orlando, Florida. Coming up, the All right, coach. We are pleased as always to be bringing you coverage of the National Football League on EA Sports. Straight ahead, bragging rights on right. the line in the 46th meeting of the AFC and the NFC oh, in the 2019 NFL yeah. Pro Bowl game. Aldrich Rosas of the Giants putting toe to leather, and we are underway in the 2019 Pro Bowl. That's fielded in the end zone, and no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Sim, L3. Speed fast. Done that. 
So, Charles, a victory for the NFC. Final thoughts on this Pro Bowl? We had some fun, didn't we? Absolutely. A lot of excitement, some big plays to watch, a lot of those great matchups that we don't get to see during the regular season because sometimes teams don't play against each other. And, oh, by the way, no one got hurt. Welcome to Madden NFL 20. Here you can try the all-new QB1 face of the franchise or enjoy the Madden you already know and love with Madden Ultimate Team, Franchise, or a quick pickup game and exhibition. So we got like 10 hours. A little less than 10 hours left. Um... Uh, wait, which one is it? Oh, this one. Nice golden football. Ross's playbook settings. Let's see. Nope, nope. Let's see settings. Just your experience. Game options. No. Hmm. Let me, let me leave you five minutes for now. Ba 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 ba. Back. Nope, 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 nope. Alright, let's start this. Um. QB1. There we go. Start. Use preseason. Let's load it. I'm going to put it to you simply. I want you to be our starting quarterback. And I'm talking from day one. If you work hard, you focus, and you commit, you're not only going to graduate here with a four-year degree, we're gonna win a national championship together. change this thing I can't tilt it it sucks man these haircuts suck this one. Beard.
Yep, that one. Bro, why are you so whack? Let me see this one. What was it? This one? This one? Let me change the nose and the and the eyebrows. Can we do that? No shape. Is left handed. <laughs> uh, no, I'll say right handed. Hometown. Miami subs. Done. Done, done, done. Alright. How do we continue? I just want to thank my teammates, especially my O-line. Uh, without them, this opportunity wouldn't be... Hey, don't forget to thank your mom. Never forget to thank your mom. Might tell me where you're going to be signing? Actually, it's why I'm hiding in here. Well, I know you'll make the right choice. And if you need any advice, I'm always here. Okay, cool. Uh, thanks, man. Yeah, anytime. Actually, I've been meaning to run into you. Hello? Hello? Get out. 
Who's it going to be? Okay, okay. Oh. 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 Big decision, no pressure. Should I take the easy way out? Same with cleansing. Kevin Durant for the Trojan. New Orleans, Baton Rouge. Oregon, next to Nike. Come on, man. It's a no brainer. Taking my tennis to Florida. see me come in I want you to be the first to know that Marcus Washington decommitted last night and he's coming here what that doesn't make any sense you said I was gonna be the starter he's the number one recruit in the country son and there's no guarantees in college football I'm sorry I'm not going anywhere bring him in I'll win the job. Just wait. Number one backup in the world. If you're the coach, how do you let five-star talent waste away on the bench for this long? No, no, no. A better question is if you're a young five-star recruit, why do you stay with a coach that doesn't play? Because he's got something to prove. And to who? <laughs> to that coaching staff, man. I mean, the same group of guys who spent the last four years telling him you're not good enough. He's got to prove it to those guys. All right, gentlemen, like Coach and I always say, the second you step off this bus, you're on a business trip. We got a lot of work to do, so let's get to it. Yeah, see that? Snow in Dallas. Iced out. Oh, no, you ask me, you're the guy to get it done. Hey, Jojo. Who's <laughs> we? I did. Yes. <laughs> Glad you know. Hey, boy. Game day, baby. Game day. Get in there. Whoa, 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 whoa. The event staff is around the corner, you see. Mm -hmm. Hey, babe, go on in there. Uh -huh. uh, this is for players and coaches only. You what are you talking about, bro? I'm here to play some bums. Uh, who is it, LSU or Florida State? Let's play these bums. I'm here to play Florida State. What? The Seminoles, yeah. You? Okay. What's your name? Superstar. <laughs> Come on, y'all know my name. Y'all know my name, bro. I'm Kevin Durant. Easy 
see out here? That's me. That's you? Yeah. Well, I don't know who you are, but uh, go ahead. I'm the quarterback. What? Yeah. Uh, excuse me. You're the quarterback, right? Yeah. Well, don't look so surprised. Uh, it's my job to know the roster. I'm Taylor Bennett. I'm working the sidelines tonight. Okay, cool. Nice to meet you. <laughs> Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Okay. Okay, I'm just gonna record them. Okay. All right. So, we all know your situation tonight, but we really don't know much about you as a quarterback. How would you describe your style of play? Uh... Oh, um... Well, I... Oh, man. Hey, I listen. Don't know. I, I like to get the ball out quick. Get into my receiver's hands. Let them do the rest. Okay. Now, how about your personality? Or better yet, how would your teammates describe you? How would my teammates describe me? Yeah, were you intense? You were cutthroat, a great leader, a jokester? Give me something. You know, they'd say I like to keep things loose in the locker room. Yeah, football's important, but doesn't mean you can't have fun. Okay, so a little bit of work hard, play hard, that kind of thing? Yeah, a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Taylor. Hey, can I borrow him for a second? Oh, yeah. Cool. Wait, hold up. You're a Heisman voter, right? Hey, I'm coming for that award next year. Look out for me. Oh, I will. Okay. <laughs> All right, listen. You ready, right? Yeah, man. Yeah? Because winning the national championship means everything to me. All right, I made a promise to my brother. And since I can't throw the ball to myself, we need to be on the same page, you feel me? I got you, man. Got you. Damn, bro. I should pick a scrambler. I don't know what's up with that time limit. I'm picking your archetype. That was dumb. Coach Cam, as a quarterback, you need to see all parts of the field. Hold L2 to check out the routes and personnel matchups before you every play. Let's go now! 60 or Lob pass. You see my. You need a few seconds to reach top speed. All right, got you. Ready? Fifty plant. Touch pass. All right. Now I'm running at a medium route. Your job is simple. When I make my cut, press and release my receiver icon. Um. Did it, isn't that what we did? Five. Oh, I said lob. I saw a little bit of touch pass. On the double. Now. Gator. Ready, ready. What do you want? Set, ready, eight, three. All right. All right. Quarterback accuracy isn't about throwing the ball at your receiver. It's about throwing away from the defenders. Hold the left stick right while you press my icon and you lead me towards the right side of the field. Hit it. Oof. 
Ready, break. I pass. Now, I'm not the tallest receiver on the team, but I can jump as high as anybody. Go a one and press my receiver icon to do a high pass. Let's go. Set. Ten logo. Go pass. High passes are great, but they're easy to intercept. If you want me to play it safe, go L2 and press my receiver icon to throw a low pass. Get it! Down! 60 out, Lord! Ramble. Looking good, dude, but remember, none of these passing constant matter if you get tackled before you throw. So if you start to feel pressure, don't stand it like a statue. Hold R2 to run to highlight his own. Big river! Big river! Ready, ready! Throw away. Sometimes you won't be fast enough to escape the pass rush. In, these in those instances, use R2 to run out of the pocket and press R3 to throw the ball out of bounds. Alright, gotcha. Uh -huh. Easiest pitch and catch. And you do that tonight, and we move on. That jump man though. All right, I just talked to coach. He insists on going with a simplified game plan for you tonight. What do you think? Well, his thinking is we keep it simple, you don't get overwhelmed, and then we rely on the defense to do their part. Wait, hold on. This, this is a joke? All right, look, coach just wants to put him in the best position to succeed. No, this ain't high school ball, man. All right, this is the semifinals. If we go out there and simplify, they're gonna destroy us. Come on, this is crazy, right? Right? Agreed. Coach needs to wake up. I'm ready for this. Forget about him, man. <laughs> Listen. I don't care how much you played, you're a leader on this team. Leaders, sometimes they have to do what's right, even if they don't like it. Got it, coach. I got you. Yeah? <laughs> them 11s, them Js. The 2018 college football season has been a wild one, and we are down to four as EA Sports is proud to welcome you to AT&T Stadium in snowy, yes, snowy Arlington, Texas. Tonight, it's the first of our college football playoff semifinal matchups as we'll see the Florida State Seminoles taking on the Florida Gators. What's up, bro? Good luck tonight. Thanks. Hey, man, don't listen to the critics. You got all the talent in the world. Just go out there and put on a show. Thanks. It means a lot. All right, man. Hit me up when you get to the league. Yeah. For sure, Patrick. <laughs> For the right to play for a national championship next Monday night in Santa Clara, we are underway from Arlington in the national playoff semifinal. Fielded about a yard deep. They find some open field here. He's got daylight. And he takes it in for a Gator touchdown. So a heck of a start to this one. We haven't even gotten settled in already in the end zone on the opening kickoff. And you know what happens, too? Now, now, now you got to translate what that means because I think for the team that just scored, their defense, I think they'll be more aggressive now. They'll be bolder. They're playing with a lead and an early one into momentum. So if you're the offensive coordinator on the other side of the field, you'd better be prepared for some heavy pressure coming your way. They're going to try and get another big score and a big one early. So let's try this again. After the kick return TD, here's yet another kickoff. Oh, I got a penalty. 
Oh my goodness. Free kick out of bounds. Kicking team. And that drives oh coaches insane, goodness. doesn't it? When they go. see that Here happen, it just it just Here doesn't feel right, does it? Plus you're giving up yardage. Uh suggestions. Let's go with suggestions. I, I don't know. With the man. Ready, the Seminoles here with a first and ten. Now a give right side. It's Cox. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. For Florida State, they're seeking their fourth national championship. They were winners back in 1993, also in 99, and then most recently back in 2013. Come on. They'll wind up getting 10 back there as he'll leave them with a third and five. Third play here, this opening drive as they're up against a third and five. Operating from the gun, George. It's complete to Grant. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. A gain of 18 and a new set of downs. Let's try it again. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Now a fake on the give here as they try the run pass option. Throw left side complete. It's Alexander. On second down now, it's Cox. Oh and it's a room to run now. And he will take this in. Touchdown Seminoles. Gavin Cox, 29 yards. And his guys are an extra point away from tying this thing up. A nice run by him, don't get me wrong, but the blocking up front was a thing of beauty. I think for an opening drive, how about that for an exclamation point? Just what you said. Good blocking, good well, vision, down the middle and accelerated last time. to the end. Try again. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Right, this is taken at the three. Oh. Ah. Uh, oh. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get it up to the 29-yard line. Suggestions. Um, that's running up the middle. Now the first snap of his college football career as the Gators start first and ten. On the ground, it's Clements. He'll have a first down past the four. Uh, <laughs> and he's going to get this into enemy territory at the 45. A big hitter there. A first down gain of 26 yards. All right. They went with the nickel look defensively, so they had five defensive backs in there. Didn't help them stop the run. Yeah, I love that. The nickel look. Five sets, five DBs. But what also happens then, you take a big body off the field in order to insert that guy. So you take a Why are you turn over there? And oftentimes you can run the football effectively against that Somehow. defense. Somehow. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked and away and incomplete. For the Gators, they are in search of their fourth national title in school history. They lifted the trophy for the first time back in 96. And then most recently, they were champions in 2006 and again in 2000. And they're going to get him. He's taking Why down for a second. Back at the 47-yard line. I, I think that's an press. example of how the game speed is different than in practice because in practice, you might not be going full speed. A lot of guys in shorts coming your way. So it's going to be a big key to see how he adjusts, yeah. how the speed really picks up in this game, and if he's Sucks. able to get rid of the football. And think about it, Charles. That's the first time he's hit the ground with a sack since his high school days. He played in a couple spring games, but those were non-contact for the quarterback. Yeah, they're wearing a different color jersey. No one hits the QB, even in the spring yards. game. Florida going to send on the field goal team here. This officially a 55-yard attempt. And it's a fake. He's going to throw it. And it's complete. They're going to get the first. How about them biting off 15 yards there on the fourth down attempt and keeping the drive alive? 
You know how I always talk about when teams line up for long field right. goals, that you should be in a safe field. defense. Right. Well, why but you're also why I'm in a position here right. where this is a makeable <laughs> kick. So rushing it is also part of the strategy. Maybe they use their aggressiveness against them on that fake. Yeah, with a low ha. trajectory, they're coming in the hot, first trying to block it. You're right, and obviously it worked out. We'll take it. It's a nine-yard pickup on the play, and it'll be second and about a yard. A good throw there, but boy, a tough situation for this offense, for this program, really. When you think about it, Marcus Washington, four-year starter, came as a true freshman to lead this team. He's third all-time in passing yards in school history, second in touchdowns, twice in All-American, a Heisman finalist, all that stuff. Never missed a game in his college career, 53 starts, but now he sits and watches as his understudy for the last four years finally gets his shot in the leading role. The Gators now with a first and goal. And he's going to press this one forward as they stop him right around the one. What? It'll be a pickup of four, and it brings up second and goal. When you look at the geography we're staring at, this part of the field, don't you always think of big backs carrying the football, bruisers trying to pound it in? And he is in. Touchdown, Gators. It's a one-yard touchdown run. And his guys have taken the lead. Now let's not forget that was all set up by the fourth down conversion earlier in the drive. Would have been a complete letdown if the drive doesn't culminate this way, wouldn't it? If you're going to go for it on fourth down, your intention is to make sure you get a touchdown out of the drive, and that's exactly what they did. Converted, and then converted a second time for six points. Point after, up and good. And that makes the score 14-7. to to seven. Here's oh, Florida now after right the here. touchdown, back out to kick it off. This is taken at his four. Come on. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. Damn, them shoes are so crispy. All right, let's do the zone cover or whatever. Here's the Florida State offense ready to begin their next drive. And they're hoping to redo their efforts in the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline. Because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal... Get a couple of first downs, run some plays, run some clock, allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath, settle down, and relax a little bit after they just gave up the score. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. A gain of five, good enough for the first down. All right, Brad, I know we're in the early going here, but those kind of runs, they're going to open up a world of opportunities for this offense going forward. Now George got his man complete over the middle. It's Brady. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 19 yards there on the catch and run. Quarterbacks love slant routes because the receivers are breaking right into their line of vision. And receivers love them as well because they're getting the ball on the move and able to catch it and try and get upfield and gain additional yardage. Back with Charles Davis on Brandon Gordon, and our drive continues here to start quarter number two as they've got it with a first and ten. George to throw. Oh, look right. at Thomas wide open. And he is out of bounds, but not before he's inside the 30. 17 yards on the pickup there, and the drive will continue. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage, and that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, a tight, sharply run route. Again, zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. A nice run there, nine yards, and it'll be second down. And that looked like some pretty easy yardage there right up the gut. And he's a guy that has some height to him. So when you don't have to drop a shoulder or create or get through contact or trash, makes it a lot easier to stay upright, see the field, and make a run as we just saw there. Looking left side, and he's got a man. That's Alexander. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 12 yards there and a first down. 
think a lot of people ask the same question all the time. Why do we see so many slants in the red zone? Well, the windows are tighter. Everything's more condensed. It has to be quicker, and you've got to deliver the ball on time. Your biggest worry, that is tipped. That's wow. caught. Touchdown, Florida State. A seven-yard touchdown grab. And his guys are an extra point away from tying this thing up. Well, that's about as quick of a passing touchdown as you'll ever see right there. Everyone has a section in their playbook called the quick game. That was a super quick game. Out of the hands of the thrower, bam, right to the receiver, successfully for a touchdown. How in-depth is that quick game part of the playbook? It's pretty in-depth because people want the ball in the hands of the quarterback into the playmaker's hands downfield as fast as possible. There are a lot of plays, a lot of options involved with that. This is taken at his four. Pretty good return here. He'll be stopped just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. Let's go inside zone. The Gators about set to take over again on offense. And Charles Way touchdowns have come so fast and furious for both sides in this thing. It's starting to feel a little bit more like maybe a tennis match in a football game. Yeah, I like your description there. Maybe oh, come on. Oh, my goodness. Box watching this type of a game. But let's face it, right now, the way it's going back and forth, it's going to come down to who can get a stop. Perfectly designed blitz right there. They took that one from the grease board to the field because they were able to free up their linebacker to get into the backfield and spill the play. And he's upended at the 33, following a good pickup of eight. So much of the game today, we're looking for hybrid players, guys who can do a combination of jobs. And anyone who plays a strong safety position Straight now up. more than ever is a hybrid type player. Half defensive back that covers passes and half linebacker that makes tackles. We just saw the linebacker make that play. <laughs> the red seat parts and there he goes. And he takes it in for a Gator touchdown. Well, they were just hoping that run would pick up the first. They got the whole enchilada. And I'm so used to teams on third down. Doesn't matter how far they press. need for a first okay. down. Throw them the ball. Instead, they run it, and as you said, picked up the first down, and then some, and then some. <laughs> In fact, everything all the way back for a touchdown. Back terrific play. Oh, the extra point up and good, and the lead is now 21-14. Here's Florida Perfect now kick. after the touchdown, back out Boom. to kick it off. They're not returning that. That'll be taken in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. All right, what was I doing? I, man probably gave me the best result. The Seminole <laughs> offense about ready to get going again. Now right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter this inside, that but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. To throw on second down. George, throw left side, got to be taken in by Harris. The catch and run, good for 24 yards. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route is extremely it's difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. Five yards on the carry. Good pickup on first down. After the pickup of five, here's second and five. George looking to pass. Brought in over the middle by Graham. And he's taken down inside the 30. 17 yards on the catch and run. It's a first down. I can't stop these guys. I like how they work the tight end on a nice little under route there. And if you're going to give him that much space, he's not going to catch the football. He's going to run away from me a little bit. And that's exactly what he just did there, picking up extra yardage. 
Looking to throw. George. Throw left side oh complete. Yo, it's Alexander. Hard. And what? inside the 20 what? before he's brought down. A nice pick up there of 11 yards, and it'll me. move the sticks. First and 10 now, Florida State. From the red zone now, they'll oh, look that's to my guy. Damn. That's caught. Touchdown, Florida State. From 17 yards out. And his guys are an extra point away from tying this thing up. And a little time left on the clock, so on the other side, they're thinking, gosh, we'd like to get that lead right back. Yeah, thanks for pointing that out. Here I am going ahead and tapping out the first half. Wow, still time. They've got to make a decision about what they want to do on the kickoff, whether they want to let the return guy touch it. The point after is good, and that is going to tie our game as we approach halftime. A couple of teams locked into a good one here. 21 all the score as the kick's away. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll take this across the 25. A couple of extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Let's try this. Um, pass play. Getting ready for their next possession, this Florida Gator offense. But Charles, so much of this offense the last few years centering around the combination of Marcus Washington and Isaiah Streets. Streets saying Washington's like a second brother to him. And, of course, many know the story. Isaiah's older brother, me, right? Ezekiel, tremendous athlete in his own right, but lost too soon to leukemia a year ago next week at the age of 20. And that is really a gut-wrenching story, as you know. And you look back at their high school days, right here in Texas, just outside of Houston. Zeke was the star quarterback, a four-year starter, 8,000 passing yards. Isaiah, a year younger, he was the receiver. The two of them told recruiters, you know we're a package deal, so if you're coming to get us, you're getting both of us. And Zeke actually recruited by both of these teams playing here tonight. And the two had dreams of playing for a national championship together, and now Isaiah with a chance to fulfill at least part of that dream. They'll set up the throw. I throw. In trouble, oh he's taken down. The button. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over 40 seconds to go in the first half. Oh, what did I call that? Man, I got you. Jim, 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 Jim. 6-6, pull it high. Sleep, Now on third and long, they'll look to throw. And tight coverage there. Oh, my it's gosh. It's not incomplete. These two offenses have gone up and down the field so far in the first half. Finally, finally, I say, here's a stop on third down. Wow. Uh, Florida's punter is out there now. As the drive goes backwards, so he's on to punt it away. Okay. It'll be a 51-yard punt that time. And the offense will take over with a new set of downs. Here's the Florida State offense ready to begin their next drive. And we're under a minute to go here. What's been an even first half all tied up? Yeah, still time to make something happen, too. A couple of See, they catch everything. I don't understand. In the field goal range. Let's see what happens. On, now another time. Uh, damn, there's no options. Out called for by the offense as they'll stop it with 25 seconds to go here in half number one. Uh, eight, three. On first and ten, George. And he is out of bounds, but of not course. before he's inside the of third. Course. That one good for 16 as the drive continues. But that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. It's a loss of a yard there, and it's second down. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and caused a nice play for lost yardage. Now they go screen. Wow. It's complete. Of course. Now a timeout signaled for, and they'll get him with 10 seconds to go before halftime. So 
So on third down, the field goal unit will come out as he'll try to get three before half. And this a 39-yard attempt. And his kick here is good. And they have regained the lead. Well, the drive ends in just three, but they'll take it. Looks like they'll head to the locker room, barring something unfortunate in front on the scoreboard. Yeah, they may not be jumping up and down and celebrating because they have the lead, but still, any little momentum in a game like this is important to a team. And they'll feel real good about going in and regrouping, knowing that they are out in front. Come on, Hail Mary. And this will probably be the last play of the quarter. They'll throw now on the final play. Eluding the pressure right. And that is incomplete. Showed off the arm strength there, but to no avail. Second down. Florida minus Marcus Washington trailing as we reach halftime. Good. Just want to check in with you. How'd you feel about the first half? Uh, hey, let's do it in the second half, baby. Come on. That was him off. Feel great. Yeah. Seriously, I feel like I played okay. We all made some mistakes as a team. Uh, I think everyone back there knows what we got to fix in the second half, though. Yeah. And if we lose, you can always lift the team's spirits by cracking jokes on the ride home. Yeah? Good luck in the second half. I'm not the one to blame. Damn, we get the ball too. Ah. The winner goes on, the loser goes home as we start the second half in this semifinal matchup from Arlington. That's fielded in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Let's try to cover three, Sky. The Seminole offense about ready to get going again. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking for some separation here as we begin the third quarter. I like the way you turn that because now I think they go a little bit deeper into their program. And the offense will be. What the hell the first they yeah, That worked okay. But in order to get the separation that you just talked about. Nine, nine and a half yards a little Come bit. On. Change your tendencies. Try and hit them a little bit more with some things they didn't see in the first half. Let's we'll see if they do just that. The Seminoles here with a first and ten. They'll run with Cox. Okay, it's cold. It's a pickup of four, and it'll bring up second down. Oh, my gosh. Four They're yards. trying to show that okay. they can run the ball, protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. Tight into the right, boy. Tight into the right. Move. Got Off play action. George. That, oh, he's got a man wide right open. Good play. Uh. And taking it across midfield and inside that one's on the 45. Me. 16 yards, a first down. So they go from one 42-yard line to the other as they come up now first and 10. They'll run now with Will Hoy. And he's going to get this inside the 30. A good game again. That's now 31 yards combined on those last two plays. They're making it look easy out there. Another first down. So I don't, I don't even know how to do the size. So I can be a cornerback. Four plays, three first downs. Three That's a pretty guy. good recipe for success. They'll run on first down. Cox. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest game. He's Give him five on the carry there, and it'll be second down. Partner, I think from our experience together, we have learned that most offensive coordinators are going to tell you if I'm going to run the football on first down, I've got to get at least four yards. They got five here. They got to feel pretty good about that one. You see this? There's a quick hitch route and the throw complete. And they've got it inside the 10 at the 8. Can you even see the stats? A gain of 13 miss a freaking it's a first pass. down. Whatever the discussions were at halftime to try to slow down this offense, it has not worked to this point. Yeah, I have a vision right now of everything that was discussed at the half just being torn in shreds or being erased off of the Microsoft Surface tablets because none of it is working. They are really locked in on offense. 
Back to throw. George. And he will score. This is incredible. Touchdown, bro. Florida State. Eight yards on the touchdown pass. And the Seminoles push that lead out a bit further. A good sustained drive there in this third quarter, capping it off with a touchdown to give them a nice two-score advantage. It was actually a fun one to watch, wasn't it? I mean, for me, seeing the mix of what they did, how they moved the ball downfield, very sharp, too. Each and every play seemed to be executed with great dispatch. The winner goes on, the loser goes home as we start the second half in this semifinal matchup from Arlington. And that'll carry over the back line of the end zone for a touchback. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. They'll run with Clements. Space to maneuver at the 40. And he takes it in for a Gator touchdown. Not a whole lot to recap on that drive. Just one play, 75 yards to the house. Yeah, it's a long way to go. And remember, rarely is it a straight line 75 yards, too. Got to have a little extra in there. So whatever the final number is, a well-deserved seat on the bench, a little oxygen if he wants it as well. No problem there on the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal. Here's Florida now after the touchdown. Back out to Touchback. kick it off. That'll be taken in the end zone. And no run back here. This will be a here touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Here's the Florida State offense ready to begin their next drive. They were able to extend their lead with an opening drive touchdown here in the third quarter, but that just got matched a moment ago. So we know that what they discussed wow, at the finally. worked. Now, what are wow. the counters to that, right? You don't just run the same things over and over. Some do, but many will also show something and then come back with something else to keep the defense off balance. An incomplete pass leads to second and 10 from the 25. To throw again. George looking again for Thomas. Here he is. Complete. And they're able to get this one across the 35. 11 yards there. First down. They sure put the coverage guys in a stress on that one. They thought they were going deep. Ends up curling inside for a nice chunk of yardage. On the carry, this is Will Hoyt. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Now we need to stop. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. Second and five. He do Sack. He lost the football. What? That is crazy. On plays like this where the ball comes free, it's often unusual for the team that lost it to get it back because this is, this is the quarterback. The ball gets away from him. Everyone else is trying to execute what they're supposed to do on offense and usually looking in the other direction, downfield, or have moved away from him. In this wow. case, though, the teammate is able to come up with the ball. Did I get it? Throwing on third down there, but he cannot connect. Finally, a good play there defensively on the deep ball. The secondary has had its struggles this entire game. Offensively, they've had their way with them. The Seminoles punter out on the field as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. And that one hits a little too close to the goal line, and it continues into the end zone for a touchback. I don't know how to do that read pass thing. Let's just do basic curl. The Gators about set to take over again on offense. And they hit the home run last drive. One play on the ground all the way to the house. Now the defense, maybe they're expecting a run here. Talk about love your description because when we talk about hitting the home run, we usually think about a passing play, aren't we? Something in the air, deep ball. But how about them just taking it? Big time, John. Now if you're coming back out, now they've established this run game, the play-action pass could very well be open. First and 10, Florida. This will be a carry for Clements. 
And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Another strong gain on the last two plays. They've moved it a combined 33 yards. He continues to be effective running the football, a big reason that they have the lead. And I love one of the quotes that I read about him where he said, of himself, I love it when a team just hops on my back and I just carry them along. Back to back good plays have them on the move on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. He'll get about four here down to the 43 yard line. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. They'll oh, run man. out of the gun. That Let's get it. First down. And here he'll be brought down a little shy of the 35 at the 36. Seven yards there and a first down. We use the word relentless a lot with Let's guys who are aggressive on the field. In this case, it really fits, doesn't it? How about his ability to break tackles and his feet never stop moving? Now a fake on the give here as they try to run pass option. What? And that'll be incomplete. We do have a penalty flag down, however. Let's see what that's about. Oh, my goodness. So this will be accepted as it moves the offense backwards. Still first down. And they're not going to get to the line to run another play. So we will switch ends as the third quarter has come to a close. Right, 60 Pittsburgh. On first down, they'll run it on the draw play. And for one of the first times tonight, he's going to be held up at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play there. Second down. Pretty effective blitz there to stop the draw play right in its tracks. And actually, when they blitz, draw play. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Enough takes to start to have a good drive. Quite like a big loss on a sack, does it? Now, now they're looking at a third and long, and suddenly the momentum shifted to the other side of the football. And Old Mo is a very, very fickle man. He'll drop to throw. He's got his man on the crossing route. A big pickup, 18 yards, but they still stop him well short of the marker. Well, so much made about the fact that we've got a quarterback who's never seen the field in a college football game, but you go back to his high school days, he's played in front of crowds. Maybe not quite this size, but it wasn't abnormal for them to have 15, 20,000 people in the stands at his high school games, and the numbers from his senior year as a prepster, impressive. Led his team to a 14-0 record, threw for close to 4,700 yards, 37 Come touchdowns, on. just four interceptions, and he also chipped in 11 Damn. rushing touchdowns to boot so it's not as if this guy doesn't know what he's doing out there under center good starting field position for them here as they come up first and ten throwing to start the drive george looking left side and he's got a man that's harris a gain of 11 to kick off the drive and it's a quick first down well how about this aggressive approach got the lead fourth quarter continuing to throw the football are you thinking about Super Bowl 51? <laughs> Atlanta had the lead against New England, just, and they ended up giving it up. I was going to say, don't say it, but you did say it. I did, didn't I? Yeah, anybody watching Atlanta, our apologies. Come on. Ten yards on the pickup there, and it'll be second day. Oh, I don't even know where to press. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as... And he's going to be and take him down. Back right around. 48 yard Finally, line. the defense is something. They had the right down and the definite distance to take a shot downfield, but it didn't work out the way that they had envisioned. No, that's a situation where if you take a sack close to the line of scrimmage, it's not that bad. Now look at this. They Let's get the it. They need it. It's intercepted. Thank you. Picked off at the 38. He was trying to hit Thomas that time. A critical error there in a tight game of the fourth. All you talk about is taking care of the football, especially with a lead here in the fourth quarter. Turning it over, now the door is open for the opposition. Just in general, when you're passing in the fourth quarter with a lead, no matter at what point, you got to be super careful. got to be careful, and sometimes you can be so careful that you end up running yourself into an error. He's got the first down here inside the 30, and he gets this one down to the 24. That good for 19 and a first down. 
Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try to snatch a victory. Back to throw. Oh. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. It's a loss of a yard there, and now second down. If you're a selfish player and you're throwing the ball, you're cool with the completion. Maybe not so cool with the yardage loss, though. Yeah, you went you went backwards on the yardage. Hey, kind of works like a sack for the defense. Cool. Here. Yeah, it's a really big play for them, right? Able to figure hey. it out, sniff it out, Yo. and finish it off. So if there are enough, so 15 yards this. on the play, first down. When prepping for this semifinal Bucks matchup, we went back and saw all the tape on Isaiah Street throughout Got the this. year. And no Ooh. matter who you talk with around the game, they say Isaiah Street's what's oh, so impressive, on, his route running ability. So much discipline, so much precision on the cuts. Not only that, but you sit down with him and you find out what an impressive young man he is. For the amount of talent That's that he great. has and all the stars and accolades by his name, incredibly grounded, just a remarkable young man. So the Bulls move to about the one after the penalty, first and goal. They'll try to run this one in, and he is in. Touchdown, Gators. Taking it in from a yard out. And the Gators have jumped out in front. Wow, I know it's a never-say-never never situation, but to me, that looks like that's the one that's going to finish them off. The score that puts them in front here late, but not, you got to rally your kick team, don't you, and say the last thing we need is a big return. And what happens is guys get overeager, get out of their lane because they're so excited they want to make the last tackle. <laughs> you mess up, could come back at you a long kick way. Kick off the middle. Important extra point up and through, um, and that will make this a four-point game. Here's Florida now Howard. after the touchdown. Back the out to out kick it off. That's fielded in the end zone. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The situation for him offensively as follows. Down on the scoreboard. At time, a huge factor. Now Will Hoyt. And from the 25, they work this to the 29. A gain of four. Clock running here. Oh, 90 oh. seconds to go. He's back to throw. It's a Damn. here. Complete to the tight end. Now the offense going to use the first of their timeouts. As he'll talk it over here before what will be an important third down. Back to throw. Why? Quick throw here. That's complete. And getting this just yeah. shy of midfield. They'll start at the 49. And they call his number it's again. It's his sixth catch and a first down. First down now, but the clock continues to move. He'll look wow. To, throw to the right side and complete to Thomas. Time. And he's able to take it across midfield before going out of bounds. The completion good for three, and it's second down. Let's call this blitz again. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Back to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Wow. Looking to go back to Thomas again, and that'll make it third down. The way he's throwing the football today, almost a surprise when he doesn't complete a pass like happened there, but he needs a few more to get his guys downfield. Well, the way he's thrown it leads him to believe that he's going to get those completions. And that means the guys going out for passes, they'll run even harder because they expect it as well. Oh, what? Come on. Oh, he's going to let it fly. And that will be incomplete. Well, they weren't scared to let it fly, but it falls to the ground and brings up fourth down. These are the spots, this stage of the game, where it pays to have speed on the perimeter, doesn't it? It certainly does. And in the second quarter, he may very well run by him. But in this situation, I know as a defender, I'm loosening up a couple of extra steps that allowed him to run with him stride for stride. On the Get out of here. Complete. That's Grant. And he'll go down, but not before getting Damn, man. inside the 30. They keep they're the game cheating. alive, at least for the moment, as it's a first down. Wow, they're cheating so bad. They're compelled to go for it there on fourth down, trailing in the fourth quarter. They got it done. And there's always a lot of pressure on a fourth down call. Doesn't matter the distance. You stop to get it done, as you noted, and they did. They'll look to throw. He's going to get his out of the backfield, complete. And they'll wow. look it inside the 15-yard line before it's all said and done. Now another timeout called for by the offense 
As they get it right at the 32nd mark of this fourth quarter. First and 10 now, Florida State. Inside the red zone here, they'll look to throw. That's going to be caught at the 10-yard line. The completion good for three and it's second down. What? Full start. Come on, offense. Oh, let's go. So that'll go. back him up five. Let's go. And that false start penalty is certainly not helping their cause here. Second down and long. One final shot. They'll look to get out of here. Nowhere to escape. Get on my and court. He goes down. So behind a victory in the first college start for their unheralded senior quarterback, his guys are moving on to play for a national oh, championship so on January the seventh. They were cheating so bad. Like I was not even on ball and they were like making every pass. I'm really proud of you. Thank you, sir. That was a gutsy performance out there tonight. You took us to a national championship when nobody, and I mean nobody, expected you to. And for what it's worth, I'm really glad you stayed four years ago. Thanks, Coach. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, baby, we going to the chip. Whew. One more game, baby. We got this, man. Oh, yeah. Football is my life, man. But you got to stay grounded in what's important. So I got a little surprise for you. Isaiah! <laughs> Em, looking good, Emily. Oh, and I'm loving this hat. Thank you. Oh, absolutely. Is that magenta, fuchsia? What color is that? <laughs> okay, hey, I bet he'd probably be good at uh, off the board, huh? Yeah. Well, Emily has the best games. Okay. If you had a unicorn, would you want its mane to be purple or pink? Well. Hmm. hmm. Well, these are both tough, but good options. I'm gonna do pink, no question. Definitely pink. <laughs> pink, no question. <laughs> no, look. You see, look, you don't, you don't pick from the options given. All right, the game is in the name. Off the board. Yeah, now nah, it's clicking. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, look, if I had a unicorn, I'd have a mane that matches his horn. Silver. Mm -hmm. I'd go with Onyx. Ah, uh, Onyx. <laughs> okay. I told you she's a pro. <laughs> hey, how are you? I thought that would. I'm Emily's dad. Hi. Can I talk to you for a second? She's too shy to ask, but Emily wanted to know if you could do something for her in the national championship game. Yeah, of course, anything. She wanted you to throw three touchdowns. Three? I thought I said four. Four touchdowns? <laughs> oh, <laughs> is, is that okay? Uh, well, four touchdowns is a lot. <laughs> Uh, yeah, but how can you turn down this face? Look at that. But I'll see what I can do. Yes. Don't, don't worry. He'll do it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. <laughs> it's great to see you again. Nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Emily. You too. Ah, I bet you were playing Clemson. All right. We got all the five stars. We're days away from the national championship game, and there is one big question on everyone's mind. Can lightning strike twice? Last week, we saw a quarterback with no game day experience lead his team to victory in the college football playoff semifinal. Kyle, is this kid good enough to win a championship? Nah, not at all. It, no, 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 that's no. it. But hold on. 
I don't think he has to be. And this is what, let me tell you what I mean. There is so much talent on that team on both sides of the ball. Manage the game. Don't make the big mistake. I think they have a real shot. I do. Kyle, we don't like managers of the game here at the table. Very boring, just like your shirt. I feel you, but I disagree. The team has a ton of talent, but they're going to need this dude to make some plays. They're not going to win at the hand of the ball off 50 times. You two be nice. You, Peter Schrager, mm -hmm. do you think he'll rise to the challenge? I do, as, as long as the pressure doesn't get to him. Yeah, for real, he's about to feel that pressure. Listen, there's a lot of weight on this dude's shoulders right now. He wins this game, he punches his ticket to the NFL. He loses, and we'll see, I guess. And then if you're a coach, how do you handle this? Mm. What do you say to a kid that has so much to lose on that field? Hey, can I talk to you a minute? Yeah, sure, coach. You know, I know it's hard to shut out all the noise. It's a lot of pressure. The only thing that we can control is what's right in front of us. And what's right in front of us is a game of football. Same rules as always. So you gotta take a step back. All right? You gotta breathe it in. You find a way to appreciate this moment, this, this time with your teammates, take in the crowd. Man, you do that, and, and everything gets real quiet. All right, so breathe, take it in. Trust me, I know what I'm talking about. I got you, Coach. Yeah, thanks. Good one. Yeah, yeah. Yo, Dan Mullen looking very different right now. We crown a champion tonight here at Levi Stadium in Santa Clara for the college football playoff national championship game. As we'll see the Miami Hurricanes taking on the Florida Gators. Yo, this game is about a half One game like to so. decide it all. Couple. It's the college football playoff Several national picks. championship, and off we go from Levi no, Stadium. Running. That'll be taken in the end zone. Oh, snap. And Ouch. he'll wind up getting an extra couple yards here for his trouble as he'll bring this one out yards. to the 27. He's 1-0 as a collegiate starter, but now the pressure rises as the Gators come up first and 10. And now the drive starts with a completion out to the right. Seven yards, the pickup on the pitch and catch. But Charles, the success that this quarterback had in the semifinal, how does it translate here? Well, it certainly helps his mindset because he has to have a lot of confidence going into this one since he did it so well in the semifinals. I do think we'll see a similar kind of offense. They'll find places for him to take his shots, and especially you have to when you've got a weapon like Streets on the outside. Able to get seven on that first down pass play. Second and three. Second and three. And now he'll turn and off his like back that? foot. He'll heave this deep and it's knocked away and incomplete but well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one take the big shot right out of the gate at worst you'll open up the defense a little bit loosen them up have them back up their heels on third down they'll try to run for it on the ball and he slips up past the 45 before being tackled the 13 yards that time of the first Defense had a chance to get off the field here on the opening drive, couldn't do it. I know that we go into these meetings with coaches and sometimes maybe we can get, you know, a little bit numb because they're always going to talk about how important third down is, aren't they? Offense and defense. In this case, one capitalized and the other, as you said, had a chance to get off the field and didn't get it done. Call it a gain of five and it'll make it a second down. 
It's funny, throughout the time that we've been together, when we talk with running backs about the ability to catch the ball, their eyes light up when they talk about open field and having one-on-one -on -one matchups, don't they? Yeah, they do. And that's the reason why, what we just saw, shedding those tackles, what? and that's what they're used to doing. It is, and it starts at the beginning of the play, one-on-one -on -one matchup with someone trying to cover them, but they also like those one-on-ones downfield after the catch when they're running with the ball. They think they're going to win those, too. They come up now, third and five, following the incomplete pass. They'll run it now, out of the gun. So he got three of one tackle, but couldn't do a whole lot else. Just a one-yard pick up there, and it'll be fourth down. Oh, well, this was just simply excellent defense. On this third down, they had to be alert for the possibility of a pass, but that didn't stop them at all from understanding what was going on when they decided to run the football, and they just swarmed and stuffed them for almost no game. Now this is going to carry well into the end zone for a touchback. I guess that's my best play. So here's a first and ten for Miami. No. A carry for Larson. And he'll go down at the 26, following a gain of six. Let's talk a little football 101 here, because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. On second down and four, Gregory bringing it in. Jackson left side. But he's free going down the left side. It's a foot race. And he will take this in for a Miami touchdown. An ideal start for them, really. You force the punt, and then you go down and score. And you've got to see a fist pump on the sideline from the head coach, don't you? Because he's turned into his bench, and he's telling his team, this is how we prepare. Force the punt, go downfield and score. I told you guys, it's just like a boxer in the gym preparing for the fight. Now we get to turn it all loose. That'll be taken in the end zone. Ah. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Let's go! Let's go! Getting ready for their next possession, this Florida Gator offense, and hoping to do better than they did their last oh, yeah. possession when they punted the football. Appeal to the vanity of your offensive line. Tell them that they control your fate. Leverage guys, win the line of scrimmage. If you do that, you start to win first down. You win second down, and guess what? You start accumulating first down, and that's what they need in order to not punt the ball again. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And an alley to run. It's celebrating, and off he goes. And he takes it in for a Gator touchdown. And on that long run, maybe the defense caught napping a little bit. The concentration level may not have been there. I agree with you on that one because those types of plays, when they result like that, they're almost like big bolts of lightning, aren't they? Whoosh, and off he goes. Extra point safely through, and we are tied at seven. So all even at seven now as they kick it away. Uh oh. This fielded at the two. Hey. He'll take it up past the 25 to the 26 yard line. Here's the Miami uh, offense everyone. ready to go for their next possession. And for them, a touchdown their last go-around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. 
But you have okay. to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. The Hurricanes, of course, a three-time national oh. champion back in the 80s, 83, 87, 89. They then added two more for good measure in 91 and 2001. But they haven't held that trophy since. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And that's going to lead to a third and 12. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. Nice. That play got swallowed up. And they'll bring him down at the 27 yard line. It'll be a two yard gain. And that's going to bring up a fourth down. I wouldn't be surprised to see the next step in utilizing this position. It's actually utilize more of a scat back in this spot because we saw the catch there, right? He made it. There's a bigger, stronger guy, maybe not quite as elusive as maybe someone else you would put in. Yeah, didn't get the big yardage there. You might out of a smaller back. How do you catch a punt? Uh, our seven-yard line. What? What? The? Man. The Gators about set to take over again on offense. But Charles, we talked in the semifinal about Isaiah Street's brother Ezekiel, lost due to leukemia exactly one year ago today. But since then, Isaiah's been active in trying to help those who are going through the same struggles his brother went through. He formed a real bond, in fact, over the summer with one of them, 11-year-old cancer patient Emily Atwood of Centerville, Texas. And we're told that Emily and her father Todd made the two-hour drive up to Arlington a week ago to watch their semifinal final victory and got to spend some time afterwards with the All-American receiver and his new quarterback. And folks out there should see how Isaiah's face yeah. lights up when the discussion turns to the young lady. He calls him and the inspiration that he takes from her fight. It's really something special to see. He makes a point to call her from the locker room after every game and he says, listen now, she's not afraid to tell me if I do something wrong. She'll critique me in a heartbeat. But it's good to see a young man who wants Go! to give back one who gets it, and Isaiah Street certainly gets it. Emily, too, said to be watching from her hospital room. A surgery scheduled for today, and now she's got a receiver and a quarterback that want her to know that they are thinking of her, and of course, we're thinking of her as well, and wish her all the best. Absolutely. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. Inside zone. From the nine, here's second and nine. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And able to break one tackle, but then quickly brought down. Just a couple on the ground there, and that's going to bring up third and about six. And the big fella stuffed that one up in a big way. I think doubling him has to be a priority because you can't move up to the next level if you don't take care of him first. On third down, yep. they'll try and Got run it. for it on the draw. What? And oh, he's going to be brought down by the face mask. Here come the flags. This is going to get him a first down. Defense. Well, we looked at each other right away. We knew that flag was coming out. Wow. I always enjoy the conversation post because officials always tell you, I don't want to throw the flag, but you caused the play. You did it. I had to. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. On first down, they're going option left. Ouch. And the second wave of tacklers is going to get him as they stop him behind the line. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. And on this play, the read for the quarterback was the defensive end, and he was totally focused on the quarterback. He should have given it off inside to the running back. Instead, he kept it and ended up taking a loss on the play. Second and 11. And incomplete. He tried to leave it underneath. Nearly got picked. They may be lucky to have that one back. Third down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down. Ah. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense. If that fell harmlessly to the ground. And now the third down throw incomplete as well. 
not only was the call spot on, how about the execution of that defense right there? The zone was absolutely locked up tight. He was trying to force it in there on third down. But if there's a time to force it, he felt like he needed to make a play, right? Yeah, exactly right. Third down, you got to try and find something. There's nothing available there for him. And he didn't quite have the back spin on that one. It hits at the four and continues into the end zone. It's a touchback. The Hurricanes offense set to begin their next drive. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet wow. and go to a spot that they haven't gone before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at okay, what you called before and realize it hasn't worked go to so something well. Else. And maybe you try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. Looking to throw on second down. Gregory will try and set oh up the screen. Goodness. It's complete. What? And he's got it past the 30 That's before he's hit and dropped. A gain of 13. It's a first down. They ran that one well. And not only did they pick up a nice chunk of yardage on the screen, they sent a message to the defense. Rush the passer all you want, but you better be careful. We can hit you going back the other direction. The Hurricanes now first and 10. From the gun, Gregory firing quickly here, and that's complete. A gain of six there on first. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now Gregory. Over the middle, it's complete. A Come on. Seam, and he might me. go all the way. And he will take this in for a Miami touchdown. Well, that's pretty impressive, Charles. It's one thing to be an elite speed wide receiver and have all that yards after the catch into the end zone, but from your tight end? Yeah, you don't get that very often. What you're describing is more like a Tyreek Hill, a Devontae Adams, and Antonio Brown. You're not talking about a guy that lines up or can line up in line and look like an extra tackle on running plays. He took that bad boy downfield just like he was a scat back. Before the game, he told me, I'm going to have a zinger or two today. And I go, a zinger or two? I guess that's a zinger, right? That's a zinger. They'll come out throwing here to start the drive. He's going to float this over the middle deep. That's going to be knocked oh. away and incomplete. Isaiah Streets, the intended target. That'll bring up second down. Charles, he doesn't seem to be particularly in tune with his receivers. Just two for seven throwing the football. But he did seem really locked in before the game. Yeah, and oh. that has to do with receivers wow. sometimes. Sometimes the defenders knock them off their routes. And you're usually pretty precise. One, two, three, cut. Balls out of his hands to the receiver. In this case, might be off by a half step either way. they got to find a way to get back in sync. He's going to oh, walk one deep left side here. And unable to connect. Incomplete. Now give them credit, they took their shot, but it's going to bring up fourth down. A lot of contact there, but there was no way it appeared that he was going to get a flag on that one. Looking for it, but he wasn't going to get it. And as an ex-defensive back, you love it when they let you play and jostle downfield. Get it, get it. Great job here. Let's this go. is going to turn out to be a beauty. This is marked down at about the three-yard line. I'll take the four yards of that one. Here's the Miami offense ready to go for their next possession. And they will start this drive with just terrible field position backed up inside their own five. But we have seen teams be bold here and take shots, right? Sometimes you go max protection, make it a one receiver route, Come on, bro. and take your shot downfield and see what happens. And like occasionally, we've seen success occur. Nine yards is the pick up there, and they'll have a second and one. Uh, and that run there does nothing but juice up the guys who are moving the football. I mean, if you're an offensive lineman, people running it, actually the guy calling plays, you're almost jumping up and down jubilation, aren't you? And now you've got options on second down. And big time options. You might want to think about play action and try and get something cheap right here over the top. Seven yards there and a first down. When an offense reads blitz, doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they've become a big part of the passing game because they should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. 
And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. Not even a chance to pitch that one as he swallowed up in the backfield. The tally there, minus two yards, brings up third down. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, That's cool. they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. So much about offense is what you call hidden yardage. You know, you, you throw the ball to someone, they catch it, and then they can make a big play. You know, they create a play, run after catch. They did a really nice job there of limiting that and keeping them from a first down. Yeah, stopped him in his tracks. Getting ready for their next possession, this Florida Gator offense. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And he fires one incomplete. Well, one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown him a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after him. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept him on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Passionate. Nowhere to escape, and he goes down. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 33 seconds to go in the first half. The offense on third down tonight, two for five to this point. This will be third and forever. He's just going to dump this one off to his fullback out of the backfield. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they stop it with 28 seconds to go in the first half of play. Florida's punter is out there now. He's been terrific so far. And this is a way. It's a high kick, and he got all of it. And did they keep it in? They did. They kept it in. It's down close to the goal line at the one-yard line. The Hurricanes offense set to begin their next drive. Now we're under 20 seconds to go in the half. I'm guessing the wise play here is be safe. That is oh, he's not going to make it out of the end zone. The push too strong, and that'll be a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pin him nice. deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt, and if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. Let's go, punt. The Gators now with a first and ten. Back to throw here. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. Why are these all run plays? Or oh, Neil. I don't know. How are you Neil? Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and ten. He'll take the knee in the final couple seconds. will tick by in this first half. I wonder if the pressure may be getting to this young Gator quarterback. They trail at the break. Hey, come on. Hey, you need to play better in the second half, all right? What? Hey, just give me the ball, all right? Let me do my thing. Got it. Hey, you know how much this means to me, right? Of course I do. Then make it happen. Okay, man. Not for you in there, open. Uh, 
Just one half remains in the college football season as we begin the second half of this national championship game. This is fielded at the goal line. Then he'll take this across the 25. A couple extra yards up to the 27-yard line. Here's the Miami offense ready to go for their next possession. They have the lead. Now they'll be looking to extend that lead. And this is where I enjoy talking about one of my favorite subjects, tendency breakers or counters as I also like to call them. You've done things in a certain way in the first half and they've had ability to see what you've done. They're going to make their adjustments. So guess what? You adjust yourself and try and stay ahead of the pace because you are looking for some separation in this ball game. The adjustment to the adjustment. Without a doubt. Show <laughs> Yo, thing, oh you my gosh, bro. Personal foul. Roughing the passer. Defense. So they will accept That's the penalty stupid. and move forward. So now a fresh set of downs. First and ten after roughing the passer. Oh, man. Off the play fake. Gregory. Come on. No you serious? Right. And he's going to be down at the 35. Gain of seven. Wow. And that was not a bad scramble there on first down. He didn't force it, nor did he throw it away. He was able to take off, and now he made it a very manageable second and short. On second down. It's Larson. Damn. Up ended at the 33, following a gain of three. And guess what? It brings up third down. Tough first half for him, unable to put up the numbers he's used to producing. But with a guy like him, you and I both know it just takes a couple of explosive right. touches for him to make an impact on this game and on the stat sheet as well. On third down. It's Larson, nice. and he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. They'll be marked inches short, no gain on the play, and that's going to lead him to fourth down. And this is right down the middle as he puts it through, and that'll push the lead up to eight. These kickers now, it used to be that a 50-plus yarder was cause for celebration, now seemingly automatic. Yeah, isn't it funny? When we prepare for a game, when you look at the backgrounds of these kickers, it's interesting, isn't it, to find out they were all-state quarterbacks, receivers, defensive backs, all-state wrestlers, right? Baseball players. We're finding athletes all along, and now they're just specialists putting it through the posts. Go, go. Now we take a glance at the offense as they work their way back out for their first possession of the second half. So, C.D., you look at our quarterback. He said it. He's been consistent. This is it. I'm graduated. I'm not going to go the grad transfer route. It's time for me to move on. If you're an NFL scout, do you see enough in him to think he's got a future in this league with this little experience that we've seen? Every scouting instinct tells me to tell him to go the graduate transfer route. But you know how it is nowadays. And look, he's played awfully well against two top five defenses. Someone's going to take a shot That's not and on give me. this guy a look. Well, several teams need a quarterback. You think about the Cardinals, they're, they're going to be picking number one. But Giants figure to be in the market. Broncos, Bengals, possibly the Raiders. So there's going to be some teams looking. And don't forget, backups are at a premium in this league. And this guy could be a developmental player. Draft him. Let him work in your organization for a while, learn the playbook, sit for a while, because down the road, he could turn out to be a gem. Ready? Now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. He'll look to throw. Oh, He'll man. just go for the end zone. And that is incomplete. Took a shot there on first down, but he Off couldn't four. reel it in. This defense is continuing to contest every deep ball that is thrown downfield. And look, it doesn't matter whether you're playing man or zone. Eventually, that becomes man on man. And you've got to trust yourself. Hey, you caught the ball, dude. The moment of truth and make a play on the football. 15 yards on the play, first down. 
Now that's a play that Isaiah Streets made time after time this fall on Saturday afternoon, and you got to think as this championship game continues to unfold, they have to find some way to slow no. him down. What Double do you do team, that for? just anything to disrupt him, because he has a knack for getting open and making big plays. It's a six-yard pickup, but it gets him to second and four. Offensive linemen love creating space for their guys carrying the ball, but when that guy also breaks tackles and creates extra yardage, they almost feel like he's one of them, and they really embrace him. The last run got six, now second and four. They'll run it now, out of the gun. Powers through again. And he'll go down here at the 12-yard line. Six yards to pick up, and that's a first down. Nice job there, finding room to maneuver. Nice. He worked his way into another first down. And look, they had a great field position to start. But boy, they've done a nice job taking advantage of it. Now they're just hoping to cap it off. Now a nice play defensively on first down as this is knocked away and incomplete. It's always a battle. Who's going to win on first down? The offense or the defense? Let's face it. If you've got the ball, four yards or more on first down is what you're aiming dude. for. I'm not passing they tried you to throw anymore. for it there. Nice effort to knock that one away and bring up second down. Only three yards on the catch. It's third down. Cool under pressure right there, escaping the pocket and finding what I think was I not think... his primary target. And some of these guys are just so comfortable getting outside of the, the pocket that they do it off. on purpose. They don't even need to be a breakdown. Just I, They move, yeah. and they know it affects like the defense because a lot of times you get lost in coverage in the secondary. And I think you're exactly right. Was it his part? Get it, get it, get it, get it. The secondary guy who sprang open probably because of his movement out of the pocket. It's good for a gain of seven, but still a few inches short here with fourth down coming up. Sort of interesting going with a draw play there. Do you like that call? I don't, but it would be a lot more powerful coming oh, from me no. if I'd said it before the play actually happened, if I first guessed it. But look, a draw in that situation, heavy risk. Let's go! Cool. He in. Touchdown, Gators. A three-yard touchdown run. And his guy's now just a two-point conversion away Let's from tying go. us up. And Charles, when you catch that toss going right or left, really, but right in this instance, do you go straight for the pylon? Is that where you're going? Well, typically you want to try to maneuver people a little bit so you have some space Let's go. to get to the pylon. So I want to make sure Let's I go. try to move them a little bit to the inside, and in this case to the left, so I can get to the right side and get to that pylon and wink at it as I go by. So all square here in this third yeah, quarter that. as the kicks away. Boom. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Let's go. The Hurricanes offense set to begin their next drive. And fortunate to get points on the board last time. They had to hit a really long field goal to do so. The kickers in today's game are so good and so skilled and hit from distances that we almost start to take them for granted. And we can't do that. That's a long field goal that they got three points out of. They've got to feel good about that. And they better make sure they love him up because he's helped them out. Yeah, now we'll see if that offense can put six on the board here. We'll see. And as they come to the line, they will not be able to get off another play as time has run out on this third quarter. Now here's a first and ten for Miami. This is Larson. Now the ball comes loose. Wow, that ball gets knocked free, but a teammate comes along and scoops it up. Almost like, it's almost like baseball. Guys at bat, people on base in scoring position, one guy doesn't get them home, the next guy comes through and picks him up. And avoids the turnover. 
On second down now, it's Joseph. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Well, they had that one sniffed out. Excellent run blitz. Stop that one for a short game. What makes a good run blitz a good run blitz? The ability to stay on task, to follow up your assignment, go to the gap you're supposed to cover, and not be deterred by anything else. And he finds a man with a crossing round. And they're well past midfield, just a yard or two shy of the 40. The goal for any offense versus his own defense, find the holes where guys are available and put the ball on the receiver before any defender can step up and fill it. They did it well there. Perfectly executed crossing route. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. Call that a gain of 11. I tell you, they didn't give it to him much through the first three quarters, but when they have, he's been efficient. Maybe they ride him more here down the stretch. Yeah, not sure it was actually in the game plan for him to have as few carries as he has, but it might play out really well for them now. As you noted, they want to ride him. Get him! Oh, no, he lost the football! Oh! You gotta be kidding me! That should have been ours. But call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground. Whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you retain possession, that's all you're looking for. No gain on the play this time, and it'll be a third and long situation coming up. Possibly a turning point. Big play coming. This is third and long. Operating from the gun. Gregory. And he's got his man on the out route. And he's going to get it down to the 33-yard line here. They get only four that time as that leads us to a fourth down. One hallmark of good defenses is understanding the game, understanding positioning, and tackling immediately in the secondary after catches. I think we just saw that on display right there. He got to him before he ever had a chance to think about turning it upfield. What a tough spot to miss a kick. Just an absolute letdown. Look, they oh, got missed. themselves in the field goal range. He missed. Gave him a chance to take the lead. They come up empty, and now you wonder... Will their offense ever see the football again? Yeah, because on the other side, one through the post, and this thing could be over. A handoff as they run the counter play. And he'll be taken down right around the 34 after a pickup of only a yard. He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. Second and nine down. Gotcha. Out to the right, this one pulled in by Streets. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. It's a first down on a gain of 10. Never make the mistake that the slot receivers, especially the little guys like we're watching here, are just quicker than fast. A lot of them combine quickness and speed, and they catch a lot of footballs as we just saw there. He's going to fire one deep up. He's got a man complete. It's a big play there. 55 yards. If you were with us for the semifinal, we told the story. I mean, this is a quarterback who was heavily recruited out of high school four years ago on signing day. Had all the hats in front of him. People weren't sure where he was going to go. So many different offers wound up here. And it hasn't been the script he probably would have written. But what a storybook ending this could turn out to be if they can take care of business in this title bout. The Gators now with a first and goal. What? The live game, offense. That's going to set him back five yards. Let's go, let's go, let's go. Still first down. Whatever. The delay of game, a costly one, as they're backed up five for first and goal. They'll give it to Jennings. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Now the defense going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll talk things over prior to this upcoming second down play. Second and goal from inside the five. And maybe a measure of revenge there. He's had his way in this one, but this time they get him behind the line. 
A lot of tired bodies on that field, but this is a big play. Third and goal. On the ground, here's Jennings. You serious? Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. And no movement for the field goal unit to break this tie. They're going to go for this thing. Fourth and goal. Here we go. They're going to run. It's Jennings. And not only will he not get in, he's going to lose yardage. They stuff him back at the four. So they pass on the chance to kick the go-ahead field goal. And that may be one they're going to regret big time. And I think the head coach is going to have some splaining to do. Right? Because in this situation... You kick the field goal to give yourself that chance at victory by going for it. Maybe you're saying you don't trust your field goal kicker, or maybe he knows something we don't. Maybe the kicker's hurt. So there'll be a lot of questions at the post-game press conference. It makes the rest of this fourth quarter and the rest of this game very interesting. And he'll get this up past the five to the seven-yard line. Give him five yards there, and it'll bring up second down. But they picked up a little bit of yardage there, and now, in this situation, should be in no hurry to run a play really fast. Let the clock wind down. Come on! And they'll get him down up past the 15-yard line. 11 yards there, first down. When he runs, he seems to do a nice job of knowing when to be patient and find the hole, and then when the hole is there, he goes quickly. You're exactly right. He knows how to just take off, but you know what else? Brings a little thump with him, doesn't he? He does. He packs the boom at the end of the run and finishes it going forward. That's what you want to see out of your backs. Give him a couple on the catch. It's second and eight. Well, sure, no coach, but there's just not down. time right now for throws that, that short. Yeah, sometimes you can't just take what the defense gives you. As Coach Madden liked to say, sometimes you have to take what you want. So second and eight here after the pass play for two yards on first down. They turn to Larson here. So that is the end of regulation here in Santa Clara. A lot of anxious looks in the crowd as we are heading to overtime to decide who takes home the trophy as national champions. So overtime looming here to decide it all. Each team will get a possession from the defense's 25-yard line. If the score remains tied after each team has had a possession, we Wait, keep going what? indefinitely until we crown a champion. What did I do? Oh, my God. I keep making these mistakes. I forgot the rules. It'll be the Gators with it first to start overtime. They'll run it now out of the gun. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. And I know you, with every carry, especially in overtime, you're just saying, if you're that ball carrier, hold on to the football. Hold on to it, protect it, but not necessarily settle it. Because you're trying to get to the end zone. You're trying to end the game right here. I know the defensive guys poking, clawing, breaking, trying to knock the ball free and protect their end zone. Yeah, like you alluded to, especially this part of the field. And that's one of the reasons you have to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. And a broken tackle helps lead to a first down gain. They have the first down with that gain of four yards. Well, someone's been having a good game so far, and you know something? A lot has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Let's go! Touchdown! First in his first overtime session. Sometimes those tight ends are a mismatch. They found the mismatch there. And that's exactly why you want to draw up those types of plays because coverage is just going to go to the natural guys, the guys that make the big plays on the outside. But if you work your tight end into it, that's a tough one for a defense to handle. Tough, they couldn't handle it. It worked out for six. The extra point up and good. And they will take a seven-point lead. So now all eyes shift to Miami. They need a touchdown and an extra point to keep their championship hopes alive. 
Now Gregory to throw. And that'll be knocked away. It's incomplete. And that right there, his first incompletion of the game, pretty remarkable. So let's start talking about all-time records because with that incompletion, maybe over a two-game sequence or maybe starts a new streak now because Ryan Tannehill, over two games, hit 25 straight. Come on. Now, the incompletion oh, really taking this record out of play. But Mark Brunel, he's a Washington, 22 straight completions to start a game. This guy's on fire. 12 yards there and a first down. So now all eyes shift to Miami. They have to have a touchdown, of course, and the extra point to force a second overtime. Throw left side complete. It's Joseph. And he is out of bounds, getting it down to the 10. It'll be a three-yard gain, and it'll make it second down. Everyone's got to be able to catch the football. Doesn't matter what position you play, but if you're on offense... Be aware, ball may come your way. That first down completion only netted him three. Second and seven. Gregory will look to throw it. He's going to flip that out to the flat. It's complete. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. That'll set them back with a loss of three on the play. And it'll be third and ten. And never good on a pass completion there to go the wrong way. Lost yardage. No, for some reason, it seems to work better when you throw it downfield or you can move the ball downfield running it that way, doesn't it? But in this case, if you're the defensive guys, you're energized, executed well, and you caused a lost yardage play. That's going to feel good and look great in film. A big call here in overtime. They're going for it on fourth down. They'll try and run for Get him. It. Yes, and let's go. He close. Did he get there? No, they're going to say he shorted the line to gain. So how about this? Behind a QB who had never taken a snap in an NCAA football game until just nine days ago. Let's for the first go. time since 2008, the Florida Gators are your national champions. Please turn your attention to the podium at midfield for the presentation of the College Football Playoff National Championship Trophy as we present your College Football National Champions, the Florida Gators. Jack Ford, talk about a long shot. And as a man who's known as the quarterback whisperer, and I suggest you trademark that, by the way, um, how are you feeling about your quarterback right now? I tell you, this kid's amazing. He worked around the clock to prepare for this game. I've never seen anything like it. And I am so proud of what he's done and under this kind of pressure. Hope all you NFL scouts out there are paying attention because this kid's special. Come on. You deserve it, son. Congratulations. Coach, this is you. This is great. Thank you. A perfect end to a too short season. You're leaving here a champion. I, 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 it's better than I ever thought it would feel. <laughs> I can't even describe it, really. It's just to be up on this stage, celebrating with these guys. It, it's perfect. It's just perfect. It is a perfect end, but it seems like you put up a pretty good case that it shouldn't be today. How do you feel about that? I, hey, I, I think I gave myself a shot. If the NFL comes calling, I'll pick up the phone. But this guy over here, this guy, the trophy man. Absolutely. Isaiah Streets, we are all aware of the loss of your brother and what it took to be here today. But can you tell us, in this moment, how you're feeling right now? It's a lot, lots of feelings, Taylor. Uh, I made a promise to my brother that I was gonna... <laughs> you know, none of this... None of this would have been possible without this man right here. This dude came into an impossible situation. He's got heart. Love you, man. Hey, I love you, man. See? This was for you, baby. Yeah. This was for you. Yeah.
Oh, oh, oh. Let's go! A lot of emotions out on the field tonight. This is what football is all about. About getting hit and getting back up. And as you can see in a season that was characterized by overcoming, these guys did just that and won a national championship. Back to you guys. Chip right. <laughs> right. Okay, yeah, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Yeah, he's actually right here. Okay, hang on, hang on, hang on. Hello? Hey, how's it going? It's Emily's dad. Look, I, I know that you got a lot on your plate, and I, I don't want to take up too much of your time, but I, I did want to tell you that Emily's out of her surgery, and she is doing great. <laughs> she got to see the, the game and everything. You have made a fan for life in her. Thank you so much for the kind words. Uh, please, have Emily stay in touch. I will. I will. Thank you. All right. Bye. Take care. See you, baby. <laughs> College football season's wrapped up, and the draft is two months away. Today, we kick off the NFL Scouting Combine. Over the next seven days, more than 300 college prospects will run, jump, catch, and throw for NFL coaches and scouts. Kyle, who's your player to watch? Okay, it's the mythical backup quarterback who just won a national championship. This guy who's played in two games. Two games, and we're saying maybe a third-round pick? Come on, the hype is unreal. Kyle, he did win a national championship. Yes, he did. It was incredible. Peter, eight quarters of football, third-round pick. Get out of here. If he blows up the combine like some people expect, uh -huh. he could be a first-round draft pick. No way. Pick. No, Nate, no way. Listen, this isn't a particularly strong draft class for the quarterback position. And you know when that happens, teams get desperate for that QB, and they start to reach a little bit. Guess we'll find out soon. Yes, I hear you, and I've been hearing you for the last 15 minutes. I'm on top of it. How many times do you need to... Yes, I'm on top of it. I'm meeting with... I've got a few other guys to meet this week, and then... I know that there's a time restraint. I understand that. Thanks for taking the time to meet me. Yes. Well, I, I know what he wants. I understand what he wants. He's told me what he wants. You don't have to tell me what he wants as well, okay? okay. Just... Can you hold on for a second? Okay, but Thank I don't you. Have a long no, time. just be quiet. I take any of the other top quarterbacks available, and I get praise, and I get to keep my job. Hmm? I pick you, <laughs> a player that barely even picked up a ball in college, and then I I'm nuts. And the seat that I've got to sit on gets red hot. So why don't you tell me why you should even be on my radar? I just won a national championship. And that's not the last trophy I plan to have on my mantle. You pick me, you better clear your shelf for some hardware. Hey, I'm gonna have to call you back. Call back yes, I'll have to call you back. Okay. Love you. I love you too, Dad. Bye. Are you for real? You know, you and I have a mutual friend, Mr. Jack Ford. He and I served on the same staff in St. Louis. What do you think he would have to say about your ability to uh, lead a locker room? Navigating a locker room can be tricky. I do my best. I try to find a balance between being the locker room guy and then the guy that the coaches can rely on to get the team bought in. But it's hard. You know, Jack had some concerns about your leadership. But I'm not seeing that. Little inside scoop. Uh, the owner wants someone with the measurables. So you go out there and you impress. You'll be on our radar. I can do that. Don't let me down. Thank you. Hand over your phone. I want to check your internet history. You want me to give you my phone? Is that just like normal procedure? 
You bet it is. You just give anyone your phone? If someone asks for your playbook, would you give them that too? No, what? What? You have something to hide? Look, son. This interview is about transparency. I think I'm being quite transparent. Not transparent enough. You're on a mountain in Alaska on a bus going 100 miles an hour. Where are you sitting on the bus? Bus in Alaska. I go front of the bus. Not middle. Nope. Have you looked at the engine before you even got into the bus? Uh, Did you check the tire pressure? I hired a professional mechanic to inspect every part of the bus as he is more qualified than me. And I am aware of my strengths and weaknesses. Are you being cute with me, son? <laughs> no. You're not. Now give me a serious answer. Would you be in the front of the bus, the middle of the bus, or the back of the bus, or the passenger side of the bus? I already answered the front of the bus. Why? Because if I can see where we're going, I can make sure we're okay. Is that the wrong answer? <laughs> oh, snap. Funny how many eyes are on us right now, huh? Breaking us down, picking us apart. Every mistake amplifies. Continues as tomorrow or something. <laughs>